hello everybody. Uh, my name is Alex Motri. Um, it is for me a real, real pleasure to share uh, this session together with my good friend uh, Dimitri Pushkar. Everybody knows Dimitri. He's an, an expert robotic surgeon uh, from uh, Moscow. And uh, together we will moderate uh, two top experts in uh, kidney surgery, uh, Francesco Porpilia from Torino and Erdem Kamda from um, Istanbul. Um, so if you agree with me, Dimitri, I would uh, propose that we uh, ask Francesco uh, to start with his case. Um, we will, um, it is a good idea of you to um, sometimes stop uh, these experts during their uh, movie in order to discuss a little bit more into depth. And, um, and so, um, Francesco, uh, can you please unmute yourself? And uh, so uh, that we can start. Um, uh, by the way, Dr. Pushkar will be our head uh, moderator. So I will mute myself and Dimitri, you can unmute yourself and, um, and so that you are in direct contact with uh, Francesco. Thank you, Alex. Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, session. Francesco, your turn, please. Hey, thank you so much Sekunda, for the invitation at this very interesting uh, meeting. So it's a great honor for me to take part of this session because Sekunda, I think this session is very, very interesting. And uh, the moderators are like, the moderators of like, the quality and in terms of like, the scientists like, the production, in terms of like, the uh, uh, excellent like, the surgeons, like, the, because like, they are in you know, as an expert like, in uh, their field. My talk today is obviously about the partial nephrectomy that it will it is guided by augmented reality. And so I'd like to show the technique that I usually employ the one I need to treat the wet tumor that is a complex tumor, especially the tumor that are located inside the kidney and where the tumor is completely covered by the kidney. So as you can see this second tumor that is located in the central part of the kidney and before doing the operation, as you can see, we try to perform the 3D reconstruction. This is the 3D reconstruction that we do usually, that we usually, we made thanks to the multi-slices of the CT scan with a work that we do together with the bioengineers with the special software that are dedicated to the medical software that are dedicated for a 3D reconstruction. This tumor, this 3D reconstruction is a very particular 3D reconstruction because it gives us the possibility, thanks to the PDF the reconstruction, the possibility to, uh, to perform a transparency, for example, of the kidney, and so on to visualize the tumor that is localizing inside the, inside the kidney itself. Okay. So the operation. Can you, start... can you stop your your video for a minute, please? Yeah. And uh, can we come back a little bit? Could you disclose to us um, which company uh, you are working with for this wonderful 3D uh, reconstructed imaging? Yes. Yeah, so um, it's a very a very interesting question because usually uh, we work with a company the, the, from Turin. This company can this the medics. They utilize uh, the different uh, software uh, in order to create uh, this uh, the 3D reconstruction. But uh, the 3D reconstruction, this is the particularity of this uh, reconstruction, is not uh, uh, made uh, by the computers. It's made also uh, with uh, human uh, interventions because uh, thanks to the collaboration with uh, bioengineers and the neurologists, we can refine the, 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 the 3D reconstruction in order to, have, to, to create the best images, the images that are useful for doing the operations. And so this uh, is the advantages in comparison to the standard technique that usually can this performed by the other authors in which only can the 3D reconstruction made with the software can are utilized. Okay. Francesco, before you, start, before you continue and start this video, very simple question, the answer is yes or no. Would you say that you use this technique for every 
kidney tumor nowadays in your department? Nowadays, second, I am using uh, this technique uh, for complex tumors. So only this for complex ones. Only for complex it. tumors. Please yeah. continue. Okay. Thank you. Second, uh, uh, so the, the kidney is uh, the left kidney. And we are doing uh, now uh, the dissection of the pedicle. So this is uh, the main artery that is dissected and suspected uh, uh, around the, 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 the tape. So also on the vein on the second, uh, is suspended. And the second, as you can see, on the way they completely the surface of the kidney. And so on the kidney is completely free by on the fat. And so on at this point, on the, thanks to the tile pro, we split the images. Second, the images is split in three parts. The upper part is on the images that we have the real images. In the, the above parts, we have kind of two types of images. So on the left part, second of uh, the left part of the screen, second, we have kind of the augmented reality, the superimposition of the 3D reconstruction. In the right side, second, we prepare already the probe. Second, the, this probe second, was utilized only second, for compare, second, for doing a one comparison between the 3D augmented reality and the ultrasound that they usually are utilized kind of during the second standard technique. Mm -hmm. As you can see, you know, the over, so overimposed imaging is perfect because you know, the margins of the kidney are exactly you know, so overimposed. And so you when know, we have the vein, the vein is perfectly so overimposed with, with the main artery, the, the, main, the main vein you know, that was you know, before isolated. And so as you can see, we have here you know, the tumor and the outline of the tumor and the outline of the tumor obviously can be projected uh, at this level. So you know, this is a, a very important point because you know, obviously we need to identify where we need you know, to you know, perform you know, the incision of the parenchyma and so we can do this kind of thanks to the guidance the guidance of 3d augmented reality so the outline on the weekend on the we can eliminate you know, the surface of the kidney. We leave only you know, the tumor. And so at this point, the outline of the tumor is projected. And so at this point, we can do the incision you know, of the parenchyma where you know, in, the, in, the, in the next next part of the operation, we perform the definitive incision in order you know, to find the tumor. So the uh, circumference you know, the limits of uh, the parenchyma can are well can identify with the electrocoagulation of the scissor tips. And at this point, after that we have done this incision, we perform an ultrasound. We utilize the ultrasound probe in order to show that the incision was a perfect perfectly can they uh, perform the uh, work and the tumor is identified with, with the ultrasound. So on the, uh, I have two with, questions to you, Francesco, if you please. If uh, you wait. stop for a second. Yes, I stopped. Yeah. So the augmented reality looks wonderful. Um, uh, can you explain to us uh, how the augmented reality is done? Is that also a human replacing the, uh, the, the images of the CT on the on the image or or is that a machine doing that and my so, second my second question is why do you vessel loop the vein that's intriguing for me and i have a third question which is a very short one should you use ultrasound uh, in all cases even you use this um, fancy uh, augmented reality technique Yes, so uh, first, the first question is that the, um, when we use the 3D reconstruction, the 3D reconstruction can be utilized before the operation in order to planning the operation. And so in order to establish it, if we need to kind of to kind of clamp the main artery, kind of we clamp, I don't know, kind of the segmentary artery. And in this case, kind of with the operation that we have a plane that we uh, established before doing the enucleation of the tumor that was important to dissect the main artery in order to clamp it. And also the vein in order to clamp the same because inside the vein, inside the parenchyma, there, there were a lot of vein. So we imagined that so the risk of bleeding during the operation was very high. 
and so forth. This is the reason that we can have a uh, lot of bleeding, so the recession of the tumor could be a little bit more complex. Now, how we transfer the images from the outside kind of the, from the computer to inside the, kind of the, the console of the robot Da Vinci. So it's very easy and we utilize kind of the software, a special software that we have kind of the, uh, made kind of that is, it is able to kind of dialogue kind of with the software kind of the, with the Tile Pro. And so we can transfer these images, and so the overlapping of the images is usually performed by an ass my assistant. My assistant follow me during the operation, some step of the operation. The first step of the operation is the first overlapping, and also it can be uh, um, allow me to, to, to do other superimposing imaging during the other step of the operation. So the superimposing imaging is performed in a manual manner. It is not automatic, and, but now we are working in order to create a software, a new software that is automatic, and we are doing this in the prostatic during the radical prostatectomy, and we start with the first experience and also for partial nephrectomy. So in this case, we need to have some landmarks. The software needed to recognize the landmarks and so automatically can overlap the images. This is what, what we do now, and now in this moment we are doing only the manual overlapping. Concerning the ultrasound, so during the video I'd like to show that the ultrasound can be useful only during the identification of the tumor, so in the first step. But I think that the augmented reality can be utilized also during the reconstructive phase when we perform the suture of the medulla. And so I think that we have many advantages. In this moment, so we did a comparative study in which we show clearly that there are not advantages if we use ultrasound. If we have augmented reality, we can avoid the use uh, to, to use uh, uh, the ultrasound. And uh, um, moreover, the augmented reality overcome the, uh, the, the, the utility of uh, the uh, ultrasound because uh, the augmented reality show more advantages in other steps of Great. the Great, thank you, Francesco. Please continue. So at this point, when we clamp, first of all, like on the main artery, we perform the incision of the parenchyma, and so when we we remove the surface of the parenchyma that is covered the the tumor that is completely can the covered the can the bike and the health parenchyma. So when we remove this. And now we start progressively with the enucleation of the tumor. So at this point, we think, as you can see, there is a bleeding. And this is the reason why we established it to clamp the, the to isolate the vein. And the 3D reconstruction showed the relationship between the, the, um, the tumor and the calyx. And the second, uh, I showed before the dissection of the calyx. Second, from the tumor, and again, in, the, uh, in, in this step, in the, we can identify in the, identify in the, the, the upper the, 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 the calyx, and the, so in, the, in this moment, in the, we are doing a decision of the calyx, and this in the, can be performed, obviously, in the, thanks to in the fact that we know in the, before in the operation, in the relationship, in the, thanks to in the 3D reconstruction, in the relationship between the tumor, the anatomical structures that are in the, located around the, the tumor itself. As you can see, in the tumor, in the technique that we are using is in the enucleation technique. This is the tumor that has been removed, and now we start with the 3D reconstruction. And so at this point, I'd like to stop my images again. So on the, with augmented reality, when I show on the, uh, the, that the, 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 the tumor was exactly projected in this area, and now when I can remove, if I want, the, the, the other parts, so when we remove uh, the, uh, the, the upper urinal tract and the, the, the vein, now when we leave uh, 
uh, they vein uh, they will leave uh, the tumor, but at this point uh, they can remove uh, completely the tumor. And so as you can see, can do, we have uh, the vascularization, the intraparenchymal vascularization. And so at this point we can perform uh, the suture under guidance. Uh, so it means that I can perform the suture uh, superficially in a, in a superficial way and without uh, the dipping on my needle and preventing in this way on the fistula can be uh, arterial and the venous fistula can they in the preventing in this way can the, the possibility to involve can the big arteries can the intraparenchymal big arteries and so can they can prevent can the risk can to can the create or renal injury can they in the post-operative state and, the, and this is uh, in my opinion another on the advantages of this technique so can i continue with the the suture that we do on the, the intraparenchymal like on the suture that uh, it is like, on the very on the superficial because it's guided by like, the, the uh, by the the augmented reality uh, usually like, on the, the suture is stopped and is secured by like, the uh, absorb lock i use like, a lot of absorb lock are like, the, the uh, um, lock the are the advantages to be like, the absorbable and this second uh, obviously can they give uh, the possibility can you to utilize uh, the, to the, to secure uh, the suture uh, and uh, in, in this way can uh, we can prevent uh, the, the cubitus uh, the by uh, the hemolock uh, in the, uh, the post operative state because uh, this second uh, adsorb lock can uh, are uh, adsorbed after three or four months uh, uh, not more uh, like uh, the evicril so uh, so at this point uh, we have completed our suture and so we can uh, remove uh, the clamp of the artery and uh, we can do uh, an uh, early and clamping before uh, the clamp from the vein. Now uh, the clamp uh, from the artery, from the artery. And so at this point uh, we, we can perform the suture of uh, the, uh, cortical, uh, the uh, cortical parenchyma. So on the suture that I perform on uh, this uh, perform the usually with uh, on the big needle, uh, they um, so in order uh, to uh, involve uh, the cortical uh, parts of the medulla, and in the same time I secure uh, the the suture only in one side, usually on the left side, not in the right side, and so on the suture is uh, sealing because again, in my opinion, it's very important to can perform can this suture can the, with the preventing, if it is possible, can the, the bleeding. And one of the technique can the, for preventing bleeding is can to, uh, to, can the, to do, can the, to can the put together can the margins of the incision that we have made can the, before, can the, during the enucleation. So in, at the end, can I perform the complete re reconstruction of can the, the the fat, the gerota fascia, and the, the reconstruction of the, the colon before they put the inside the, the, the colon the, along the incision with the suture with, uh, with the hemolock because they stop in this way, restore in this way they complete like, the anatomy and sometimes I don't use the drainage. Thank you so much for- uh, Thank your... you very much, Francesca. I really appreciate it. And I do believe that in a, in, we had so many questions during the presentation. So we moved to air them in order to have the opportunity to stop him for a second, probably to ask some other questions. And if we leave time uh, at the end, we will ask uh, many other questions to, to both of you guys, okay? Air them, your, your turn, please. Okay, thank you. Very nice presentation by Francesco, by the way. Can you see uh, the title of the video? Yes. Uh, shall I start? Yes, please. Uh, okay, this is another example for the left uh, kidney intervenal endophytic mass, uh, similar to Francesco's. Uh, so I'll start the video. This is our team and uh, hospital for this case. Uh, I used a Da Vinci XI surgical robot. I used four 
of the arms and we had two assistant ports and also we used a drop-in ultrasound probe during the case so this was a 30 year old 30, 32 year old female patient and she was uh, incidentally identified at 2.5 centimeter left renal mass which was completely endophytic so this is the ct of the patient we can see the location and the size of the mass it is completely central and very closely located to the renal pedicle uh, and branches so the initial step is uh, directly uh, identifying the pedicle the renal artery and uh, vein like francesco did and i like securing the vessels with a vessel loop then we introduced the drop-in probe the ultrasound probe it's uh, very easy to use and it shows nicely the borders of the mass so we can uh, cauterize the borders of the mass on, on the renal parenchyme by applying monopolar uh, cautery on the right side so we can see the mass at the bottom uh, via tile pro we can see that the mass is very closely located to the renal vein and the renal artery so it's just above the renal pedicle and i assume it's very close closely related to the vessels so in this type of surgery we can always have a major blood bleeding if we injure the vessels main vessels underlying the kidney so we are prepared for that and as as i said before i secure all of the vessels one by one with a vascular tape just in case uh, i can identify them easily so before starting uh, to perform partial nephrectomy uh, i applied bulldog clamps uh, on the artery and the vein and after that uh, starting from the borders that i marked at the beginning of the case i start cutting at this time the pressure is about 15 millimeter mercury and uh, i know that the mass is very close to the renal vein we can see it in the middle so here i'm trying to dissect it by the enucleation method from the renal parenchyme and also from the main vessels we can see the mass on the left and at this stage i decided to dissect a part of normal kidney parenchyme in order to completely access the mass without doing that it's not very easy to completely access the mass and because I'm using the fourth arm, uh, which has a progressed forceps, I can make gentle traction that leads to a easy dissection of the mass. So I think using the fourth arm facilitates the whole procedure. Because two of my hands are free, I can work nicely. and it's almost done the mass is enucleated for the small vessels i can apply monopolar cautery in order to control bleeding and i don't go deep in order not to injure the underlying vessels so the partial nephrectomy has been the enucleation sorry has been completed uh, the next stage step is to perform uh, renography for this procedure i like using monocryl suture uh, and because i know that the mass is very closely related to the underlying major vessels uh, in order to not to injure them i'm not going at the bottom of the partial nephrectomy area in order not to injure the underlying main vessels uh, actually i learned this technique the, especially the renography technique from Prof. Motri, uh, I like using the monocryl suture. It's easy to slide 
and tighten the partial nephrectomy area. And I apply uh, VEC clips on both sides of the partial on, of the internal rarity. In order to fill the defect, uh, for this case, I used a surgical cell mass that fills the defect and then continue performing the venerophy. And again, on both sides, uh, I asked my assistant surgeon to apply back clips that holds and closes the defect nicely. So the venerophy is almost completed. So we can tighten it. And we always tighten the beginning of the the starting point of the renography by adding another, another bulldog uh, back clips. So all the bulldog clamps are removed one by one in order to see if we have any major bleeding. And we check the partial nephrectomy area by decreasing the pressure to five millimeter mercury. And we don't see any major bleeding at least, but we have some a small oozing type of most probably venous bleeding. All the vessel loops are removed one by one. And for the small oozing bleeding, we applied some additional hemostatic agent. And this was the end of the case actually. In order to see the perfusion of the partial nephrectum and the kidney, we administered IV ICG in the green in order to check the perfusion. And we can see that the kidney is nicely perfused by seeing the green color uh, in the fluorescent mode. And lastly, uh, we uh, administered a drain. For this case, the warm ischemia time was 32 minutes. The estimated blood loss was 400 cc. Console time was three hours. Uh, and the patient didn't have any complications and the duration of hospital stay was uh, three days and the pathology report was metonephric adenoma uh, for this young lady. And we concluded that robotic partial nephrectomy can be safely and effectively applied uh, on completely endophytic kidney masses. Robotic endoscopic ultrasound is very useful to identify the mass and its borders. ICG application shows kidneys perfusion and use of the robotic port arm is very helpful. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and ready for the questions. Thank you, Erdem. That was fantastic presentation, challenging and difficult case. And you, it's a masterpiece and what, what you have done with the VIN, that was really, that was really fantastic. I don't think we have time, Alex. Well, we have two uh, more minutes, uh, so... Uh, we do have, we do yes, have. We do so have my, my simple question to, to all of you, including Alex Montry, my simple question. Do we have any criteria to say this team is ready for these challenging cases? We have two minutes to answer this question. That's a very important question as a take-home message. Uh, when, when should we say this team is ready to perform such challenging cases. Any thoughts? Erdem? Uh, the number of cases that we perform should be at least, uh, I think, 20 or 30 cases per year. So uh, the team should be very much experienced in uh, performing this surgery. Otherwise, you can lose the kidney, especially if you are not very much experienced and if the ischemia time is uh, long, then you can definitely lose the kidney. So. Thank you. Uh, it, it depends on Thank the experience you. of the surgeon. I appreciate it. Francesco. Hi. Any criteria? So, any criteria? So, when I think that uh, when the usually, when if you have a good experience, when the, we after when a certain number of procedures, when the, usually, when the, uh, 100 the procedures, I think, when the, we can do when the very when the challenging, when the, uh, uh, very challenging when the procedures, like this one. And so and I think this is a very important point. And so and we don't need and to start and your experience. And we, we, we cannot embark on this type of surgery and for treatment of this type of tumor. And if you have not experience, at least I think and you need to do more than 56 procedures. I understand. Thank you, Francesco. Alex, 
it was a real pleasure serving you guys during this session. And I know that you are the greatest expert ever global in a, in a kidney surgery. So tell us, tell us what do you think? When we should say this team is ready? Well, uh, th thank you very much, Divi. Uh, this is a very political question and the time is up. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, no, I believe this is a very good question and I don't think we, we still, we already have the answer to it. Yeah. Um, I strongly believe that only with building up experience you should do that, but especially guys who don't do a lot of cases, who don't, who are in the beginning of their experience, they should probably send such cases to people like Erdem or Francesco. Um, and, um, and so we are, you know that we are working all together at Eris, uh, to have, uh to have, let's say, objective, quanti quantitatively, uh, measurement of, of skills of somebody, uh, but we are not there yet today uh, uh, to, to answer this question properly. Uh, Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It was a very nice meeting. Thank you very much. And Alex will send this Zoom to SRS. And thank you, SRS, for uh, approaching us to do this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have fun. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Stop recording. You.